a um, few years ago, link ago, it's kind of the on online platform, they have a fear factor index. And they found that among 1,082 respondents, their survey, one in three Americans were found to be scared of fail of, of scared of failure. That was a 31 percent. That was more than a fear of spider, 30 percent, and or being home alone, 9 percent, or even the paranormal. 15%. Only the whole film outranked the fear of failure by just only 1%. So the survey said that clearly that uh, the fear of failure is one of the most common fa uh, fear among most of us. And also the interesting fact from the survey is um, that the millennials those who, whose age is at this point between 23 and 39, they are more likely, more than any other age group, have the fear of failure the most. They ranked 40%, the average on 31%. In comparison with even Generation Xers, which is my generation, it's only 31%. But, and the boomers, they, their fa fa fear of failure is 23%. So you can see the millennials, who's the younger generation right now, they are the one who has the most of the stress of the fa fear of failure. 40% is pretty high. So, but when you um, regard it, don't uh, really focus on the age, the fear of failure all of us kind of experience it. Despite of our ages or our backgrounds, disappointing other people and taking risk. And um, those are the one of most common fears among us. And those fears uh, really influence a lot. The fear of failure is the voice in our head continually saying that you will be embarrassed you, yourself if you do this. You don't have what it takes to accomplish this. It's too hard for you. Don't even try it. So those kind of voices keep um, working in our head. And when the fear of failure really takes over, you begin to avoid taking risks. Because every risk taking include the possibility that you will fail, that you will lose face, that you will embarrass yourself, or people will laugh at you. Sometimes we became risk a boss because we think all the way of the dreams, the vision or action we are completely uh, contemplating could go wrong. We doubt whether we are really equipped to pull it off and if we fail, the consequences could be more serious than people just laughing. In some situation, they could include a real disaster sometimes. So risk taking is not easy and with the fear factor in it, it's really hard thing to do. Well, let me share my first hiking experience in Switzerland. Well, I share a little bit about my panic attack last time. So after that, I decided that I'm going to join the hiking group. I will have to be outside. So I met uh, the people at the park, school parking lot, and we all coupled. And it's little, uh, we all went to a little town called Bruni. Bruni. And then right there, we start hiking. But before the hike begins, the leader of the group remind me that this will be a challenging course for the beginner. And again, this was my first hike. I never hiked before. And I didn't even have proper shoes at that time. So I just uh, wear my running shoes. 
But uh, I told her, well, I'm pretty healthy and I, I am pretty able to do most of things, so I think I can, ch I can get that challenge. So I told her, I will let her know if I need any help, but um, I'll be fine. So um, we all start hiking, and uh, this is where we begin. Uh, so it was the parking lot that I took the photo, and you know, looked so nice, wonderful day. So I said, wow, okay, this is a great, perfect day to start my first hiking. So it was kind of mild slope with the beautiful yellow flowers all around. It was in May, so um, it was just a wonderful time, early summer uh, kind of. And then there was a trail along the tree trails. So that was the first um, road that I've been taking. I was so happy, and, and um, I start talking to other people, and it seems like it's just enjoyable with no problem. But when we passed after an hour, the first one hour was just no problem, but after we passed a lodge, then suddenly the scenery had changed. And then all the trail turned into a steep, rocky road. So um, when you go at certain height, there will be no trees. So it's a scorching heat. There's no shade. And there's all rocks all around. And then uh, if you see the next photo, you had to hang on to the rail. And uh, there's little rope along the uh, rock, and you had to hold on to it as if it's your own life. And um, I had to focus on my breathing because indeed it, it was intense uh, hiking and trail. And I cannot talk, and after that, no photos because I don't even have time to take the photos. So after that and all the way up, two hours and a half, I felt miserable. And there were people keep on checking on me. Are you okay? Are you gonna be fine? And several times I really wanna say, I really, I cannot go anymore. I wanna stop right here. And um, I keep, in my head, I had to keep on reevaluating the risk that I'm taking right now. Is it worth it? Why am I doing here? And I keep questioning that until when I finally arrived the mountain top, and I find, saw this, and then the other, the whole scenery. When I look around it, I, I was so glad that I didn't give up. I know I can stop any time, and I can go down any time, but. I will never know such a beautiful, breathtaking view in my own life if I didn't take the risk and continue to move on. So, can you imagine that I hooked on the hiking? So every, every week I was on the mountain hiking. Well, again, uh, there are so many other people had the same ideas. The Mary Taylor Moore, who was a social activist and also a famous actress, once said, take, ch ch take chances, make mistakes. That's how you grow. Pain nourish your courage. You have to fail in order to practice being brave. And you may have heard the hockey player, Wayne Gripsky, and he said, you miss 100% if the shot you didn't take. So many things that are good and important in life requires risk. Risk also requires the whole percentage to fail, the humiliation, embarrassment, and pain. Maybe the first step toward overcoming the fear of failure and taking risk is to recognize that you are going to fail at any times. If, as, ev so, as everybody you know, sometimes you are going to 
make the wrong decision. Sometimes we'll laugh at you. You are going to fall on your face. People will say bad things about you. And yes, these failure will hurt you. Lots of pain. But not nearly as much as you fear. That pain will actually teach you and lead you to bring a, a totally different place. The Winston Churchill once said, success consists of going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. And also Michael Jordan, the NBA star, he also said many times that he missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. But he said, and he also lost 300 games, 26 times he been trusted to take the game-winning shot, but missed. And he said, I fail over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. The fear of failure can be a powerful asset because it can lead you to work really hard to develop the skills and uh, the knowledge so that, so that we can not fail. But often the fear simply lead us to flee, to quit, to make excuses, and seek to avoid whatever it is that we are afraid and we are not really facing it. And um, I taught Korean, so many foreigners uh, throughout my times. And you know what? The one thing that they can learn the most and fast is those who are willing to try, even though it's not perfect. But if you just wait until you're going to perfectly pronounce all the words, you will never going to learn how to speak Korean. So the first and the best way is you keep on trying. Even though you fail, even though you sounds weird, doesn't matter. You just keep on trying. And when you see those people who keep on trying different languages, it's so cute. And I just admiring those people. That inspire me too. So don't feel miserable. And Lynn has that fear too. When she started uh, learning Korean, she knew that she not sounds good and all the Korean kids make fun of her. So she has that fear, the great fear, and it became a pain in her. So when we went to Switzerland, she had to learn another language again, the German, and she was not happy. And she was not going to say a word until she knew that she will perfectly pronounce it. So her German for four years, even though she tried, was not as good. But um, later on, she finally understood and tried a little bit better when she met a wonderful teacher. Again, you know, just think about that. Well, uh, we are not all learn and uh, born with all the, these ability. As we fail, as we continue to try, then we can learn and we can get all those ability and skills as we move on. Maybe. Um, playing piano will be the same too for many cases. You had to practice, otherwise you were never going to learn. Okay, often in scripture too, God calls his people to take risk. God wants to move them to the, another level. In fact, you cannot actually be a Christian without being willing to take the risk because our goal is perfection. For you to be the perfect person, you had to continually take a risk, change yourself, and be better. So that is one of the, um, the characteristics as a Christian. You had to take a risk. Abraham and Sarah, they are living a very comfortable retirement life in Haran. In age 75, God called him to leave his own home in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord said to Abram, leave your land, your family, and your father's house for the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and will bless you. 
I will make your name respected, and I will be a, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, those who curse you I will curse. All the families on, of earth will be blessed because of you. Abraham could easily say, no, not me. I will never be in other countries. I will, I'm quite comfortable here. Please send other people. But he would have missed out the great opportunity and the adventure that being with God and being the center of God's plan. If he said no, he would never know and never experience all the things that we have known about him in the Bible. At the age of 80, he was, there was another people um, in the Bible, the Moses. The age of 80, he was tending his father-in-law's sheep and the goats in the middle of, of a Sinai desert. When God spoke to him from a burning bush and said, I've been seeing the suffering of my people back in Egypt. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And the Moses said, O oh Lord, Please send somebody else. Well, that's the most people's responded. Imagine God himself is speaking to Moses at that point. And Moses tells God to find somebody else. He's terrified of the fear of failing. God's promise respond to Moses' fear was captured in the word from Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. The most greatest and the most profound life experience all come after this. The purpose for which his life has begun for 80 years earlier was just focused on that moment and he was flourished after 80 years of his age when he takes the risk and willing to respond to God's plan. He almost missed it for fear. 40 years later, as the book of Joshua begins, as we just said, Joshua was with the Israelites and camped the opposite of the promised land. Aware that there are fortified cities and their people are well armed, much stronger than the Israelites. In their moment of fear, we read the words over and over again. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord speak to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Again, Jesus told his disciple over and over again, the, the groups of misfits, the fishermen, tax collectors, and who knows what else. Most of them had never been outside of the Holy Land. But you know, remember what Jesus asked them to do? Go and make the disciple of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Again, look, when they heard this great commission, I think they said, what? Go where? Do what? Telling of what? And they thought that it's beyond their ability. 
They don't think that it's even possible. When I discuss about this scripture uh, with my um, discussion group uh, last week, I realized that our church, the Homo United Methodist Church, once faced this fear of failure also. On December 14, 2003, I have a record. At 6 p.m., the old church meeting was held to consider and vote on the restroom, classroom, library, and kitchen building project. This project cost $250,000, which was certainly far beyond the ability of church budget at that time. Many was doubt and never imagined it could be ever been possible. However, there was a voice of dreamer that calls us to take a risk and challenge us to put our faith in God. The voice shared the vision of our church that we can be the center of community where people are gathered and celebrating the best and the worst of their lives together and share the meals and time together to learn. The voice continued to encourage people to share the dream together. Everyone listened and talked to each other and all people start to imagine the same future with God in the midst. It was amazing that all of you choose to listen to the voice of the dreamer and choose to build the church up together instead of taking our side and tearing apart of the whole community. With all your understanding and support, the voice of dreamer became our future. Everyone began to help and support this impossible dream. Two years later, you had a groundbreaking ceremony on August 14, 2005. And this is the picture that I found. Maybe some of you remember that time. You raised money together, lay the rocks together, and paint the walls together. Do whatever you can do to help this impossible project. Under the guide of the constructor, Paul Tetman, who goes far and beyond, um, the remodel, the whole project was complete and had a dedication service on March 8, 2009. There was a mortgage supposed to pay for four, five years and you all worked so hard and paid that all up within four years. And um, do you all recall those times and moments? The joy and excitement that you experience. And one of you recalled that day and told me that that was truly the God moment because it was clearly that we cannot able to do it with our own budget and our own ability and as a size. Over and over, we find this word in scripture. When God calls us God's people, and if God goes with us, we don't need to afraid. But the question is, are we hearing the voice of God? Are we listening to the voice of the dreamer who could see the ability and the power from God? Or are we following our own voice that is solely grounded in our own ability and power. God will be with you wherever you go when you are listening to his voice and following his dream and his plan. As you take the risk that seemed far beyond your own ability, God will be there with you to continue to meet the needs. So do not be afraid as you take the risk. If you know that God is willing, that you will able to accomplish far greater things 
that God even entrusts you to do it. So at the end, if you continually challenging yourself, you will experience the beauty that is far beyond your own imagination, just like the mountaintop experience. And you will never gonna get until you try. And we will never gonna have this church if you never try, dream, uh, 15 years ago. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you so much for um, your promise that you will be with us. Help us to continually listen what you have to say to us and help us to dream your dream and be in your plan as we continue to unfold our life with you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.